Amen. Is the year far gone? Can we still say Happy New Year? It's still yet. Praise the Lord. Give your neighbor a high five. Yes, my dear, you have been greeted by Peters. Peters, say hi. Yes. That's a good one. Thank you. May you have your seat. Uh, I would like my sweetheart to stand where she is and say hi. She is Salome, one boy, Wakariuki. With her is another princess, Smiley. Say hi. Yes, she is Nema Wanjogo, the professor. Amen. Um, Peter Karioki Berito. Born in county number 19. Brought up by Christian family, mother and dad. But after a short while, they taught me how to be a good Christian and taught me how to go to church and to live as a Christian child. But it was short-lived. I started learning other things contrary to what I was taught by my parents. And I did what children who are disobedient do. And I continued that way until I was a big boy in Form 3. 1992, that's when I realized that I'm in the wrong direction. I asked the Lord to forgive me, my stealing, my abusing, my fighting, and my disobedience, and even what was coming in my life as a young man. And when I allowed Jesus into my heart, he really transformed me. And from that day, we became friends, and we have been working with him. He has been taking care of me even when I'm down. And I'm so grateful that those things that he removed me from, I have never gone back there. And when they appear to come, the cross is always my refuge. Were it not for that day, I could not be standing here with you. Were it not for that salvation, I could be long dead. Were it not for that day, 27th December 1992, I could be a drunkard sleeping in the dens like any other drunkard. Were it not for that day, I could not be having a family because I could not be able to sustain it. I thank the Lord that because of that day, I started my journey that has brought me here. I'm the children pastor in the PCA church, and I'm so grateful. I work in the head office, thanking the Lord. I've been here before, and we did a lot of good things with you in our family service. I was told that now you have sweared you cannot fix the two churches. So today, we are dealing with adults only, the big church only. But... Uh, the same same medicine the word of God that brings salvation we have tried to spare a lot of time because today is a special Sunday uh, because we have hard stuff to, ch ch to chill we have hard stuff to chill I'm trying to look to everybody's face I wish I can I would like our eyes to meet with you. So don't put your eyes down. Is it possible to have this mic out of this place? Not because I'm very interested with your, with your face. But as I stand here, the anointing upon me this morning, it will have a different impact in your life if you so will, if you so desire. 
Therefore, we'll work with the projector so that I cannot use very many words to mean very little. So, welcome. So, I have introduced myself. Sorry, it's not a family Sunday. But let's flip through that slide, then go to the second one. Uh, we have gotten our reading, so we can jump off that one and go to the second one. And then we have our title. Our title is, Thy Will Be Done. Thy Will Be Done. I'm trying to remember how many times I have made that prayer. Maybe you are better than me in uh, remembering. You are remembering section in your mind is better than mine. How many have you done? How many times have you done that prayer? Or have you said that? I'm asking you. How many times? Many are, many is relative. Uncountable, meaning over a hundred, over a thousand. Okay, can you remember when you learned this? Eh? Okay. But maybe today, it may be a day with a difference. Because we'll be able to understand with a deeper knowledge of what we mean or what we intend to mean when we say this. Because maybe we say, but we don't mean it. But what do we intend to mean when we say this? Okay, let's move on. Uh, these are the words that I would like you to remember as we move on. All to Jesus, I surrender. Say that. Because today is a big church, I will not tell you to stand up as you say it. So, all to Jesus, I surrender. Can you show me the sign of surrender? If you mean surrendering, how, which action can you do? So I want you to say that as you do the action. Say it. I've not seen anybody with things in the heart. I see only empty hands. What does that mean? Everything is below. So the hands are empty and raised. All to Jesus, I surrender. Okay. Let's go. I will introduce with a story. There is one animal that is very special. God, an eagle. An eagle have a very interesting story, but I'll try to shorten it. This bird, slowly, this bird can live for a very long time. But a time an age leeches when this bird is left with the two options. Either to die or to renew its life. Two choices. Either or to renew itself. If it is decided to die, it just dies. If it is decides to live again, then it starts the process. It goes into the mountain, as you can see in the picture. And then, the two things that are mostly affected by age are the beak, the tendons, and the feathers. So it undertakes a moment to hit its beak upon the stone. Have you ever had an injury in your nail? How sweet is it? So now you can imagine a beak, how painful it would be. And not cutting, breaking. 
after it is through with the breaking, it awaits for it to heal and grow. After the growth, now it embarks next on the removing of the feathers. Until all the old feathers are out. Once they are out, it cannot be able to fly. It has to wait until new feathers grow. Once they grow, now it can be able to fly and go back to start a life. And it can live 40 more years after that. Tell your neighbor, wow. But it is after a painful experience. Therefore, let's go. I want us to look at a few words. And I use the fashion that I looked at. Then give, give all of them. May thy will be done. I want us to go back to English class. I'm not very good. I was not very good. Neither am I very good in English. But I try. So that to bring the concept out. Let's go. May. May may mean to concede, to accept what is being done by somebody else. Probability, to concede a probability. Yani, you allow whatever may come forth. It means to grant permission. May I? So, I need your permission. It may mean be possible. Be possible. It may mean be a tribute. Now, I have made all to you. Now, be a tribute to do whatever you wish. It may mean practicable. Among all those things, what is practicable? Do it. It may also mean shall. I have done mine. Now, Shall it be? Shall it be? Mm -hmm. And then will. After this. It's something that will come in after this second. After this minute. After this day. After this month. Whatever will is future tense. Are you together? Can I see your hand? Good. Next. Bye. That is colloquial English. But it may mean on you. Now I have executed it. It's not on me. It is on you. What I have said may is not me. It is you. When we are talking thy, we say what belongs to you. What you have. You, what you be, belongs, to, what you possess, it may also mean what you ascribe, what is entrenched in you, it, what is inside you, that is what I'm talking about. It may mean what has been assigned to you, but it is already yours, you possess it, assigned to you. What is your attitude? Within all these things, your attitude, thy, thy attitude, your attitude, it may mean according or accord. What you have it, what have been accorded to you. Now it is not anybody else, it's you. Next, read it. Will. Will is to determine. Among all these, determine which one. Among all these, you have the power of control. Yani, now it is within your power. What pleases you, what is within you, it is within your power. Do it. And then, it is one's action. One's, not mine. Not anybody's else, yours. One's action. 
self-command. Nobody has commanded you. It is self. Self. So, will. Will means you don't uh -huh, you don't manipulate. It is self-command. It means it is self-containment. What is within you? What you contain? Your willpower. Somebody says, a bee cannot be able to fly. While it's not for its willpower. Because its wings is contrary, it's contrary to its weight. Therefore, because of the willpower, it flies. Therefore, out of your willpower, out of your power to will, to desire, now that's what I'm mentioning about that. Okay, next. Be existence. Living life existence. Hey, are we still together? Those who do not like English, I know now they are off. We are going to get you in the other one. Now, the last one. Done. When it is done, it's no. Uh -huh, it's no. It's no longer. It is already. So now it's already. It's past. It's no longer. It's already no longer happening. It is already done. Finished. It is agreed. Conclusion has been made. It is already performed. It is behind us. It's performed. And then completed. Done. Completed. And then required state. It is already in its proper state. Now it's done. It's where it's supposed to be. Mm. Full stop. Game shot. It's done. We say all the words together. May thy will be done. Let's try to complete, to conclude. Let's see the conclusion statement. statement. Therefore, let's read together. Lord, allow from your abundance to bring all created things in harmony out of your perfect love and righteousness. Let's get it together. Once go. Lord, allow from your abundance to bring all created things in harmony out of the perfect love and righteousness. Just think it about your Lord, you, yourself without me interfering with your mind. Just let it sink. Read it through on your own. That is what we are saying, may thy will be done in other words, in many words. Let's do it again the third time. Lord, allow from your abundance to bring all created things in harmony out of the perfect love and righteousness. Let me make it a bit simple. Lord, you see it in capital. And I believe you have noted the whole of the Bible. Where the Bible is talking about God, Yahweh, it is right in capital L-O-R-D. When you see that, know that it is talking about God Almighty. Check your Bible if it's the right Bible. That's how it is. Therefore, even here we are talking about Lord Yahweh. Then allow. I want you to capture this. From your abundance, bring all created things in harmony. I want to synthesize that by bringing an illustration of a masonry. Fundi wa, wa mawe. 
Just take a chance. Look at the wall. You see the wall? And especially that part. How are those stones planted? How are they placed? Any stone that is outside? Yes? Any stone that is outside? Even the outside? What made them to align themselves? What did the masonry use to make sure that no stone is ahead of the other? Ask your neighbor. What did the, the masonry use? They call it a plumb, a plumb line. Mwabie kwa lugha yenu kwa sababu begini hajui plumb line ni nini. So that made sure that no stone is protruding and no chance of falling away. Because even if this house is built with the 2,000 or 1 million stones, none of them is protruding because they have been aligned by use of a blood line. That is what we are talking about. That Lord allow from your abundance to bring all created things in harmony. Because he is the creator, now me, karaoke, you, Irimo, you, Otieno, you are praying and telling, Lord, align me, align my children, align my family with whatever you have created in measure of harmony, in perfect love and righteousness. <laughs> I still want to see your eyes to see whether you are following. I wish you were there when that mason was doing that. In case the stone tended to protrude, what could the mason do? I'm asking you, tell your neighbor, help me preach. What could the mason do? Or what do the masons do in case a stone tends to protrude? We call it dressing. We call it, for those who are not fortunate to do 844, we call it stone dressing. Meaning, he takes a chisel and makes sure that the stone agrees with the others. Imagine the stone was alive. The stone was living. Imagine the stone was alive. I want to hear the sound of the stone when it is alive, when it is being dressed. Tell your neighbor, please. The stone is being dressed. It's alive. What is the, what is the, the sound? What are the complaints? Wee, wee, ee, ee. Please, 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 please. But could the mason listen? Do you think the mason could listen? Why? His assignment is to make sure that this building, all the stones, align. And now, the wheel of the stone is not coming to be counted. You are not hearing. Here, we are not counting the wheel of the stone. What is the wheel happening here? Whose wheel? So the mason's wheel. So the stone must lie there. In, in most cases, they put it between the legs to make sure that it's well done. And it is slanted in this way. And then, so, <laughs> it's powerful. Meaning, now thou, we are being dealt with by the mason the day he won't. He won't. You know that is what you say when you say this? When you say, 
thy will be done. That's what you mean. You mean, Lord, I'm a stone in your hands. Keep me in your good position. Make sure that your chisel is well sharpened. Now deal with me until I align myself with the other stones. Let me give you a minute to think that. Think it in. I don't know whether the session you are sure of what you are telling these people, or you yourself, whether you are sure when you are choosing this thing, what you meant. You members, you accepted and celebrated for this thing. I don't know what you thought about it, or whether you are ready for it. I bring now your conscious in. Forget about the past. Maybe you did it out of ignorance or out of accepting what you have said by the, the minister or by the session. But now with your conscious mind, do you feel still ready to say, but I will be done? Before you answer me, think it. Do you feel now with your conscious mind, you are ready to, to say that? Now you can answer me. Do you feel ready? Let me bring you more conscious in your mind. Do you know what it, it means? Do you know what it will cost you? Seeing it's different from acting or leaving it happen. Do you know what it will cost you? Let me give you an example of what it may cost you. Do you know it may cost you leaving your house? If you are somebody who is in the wrong house, maybe you are intruding somebody's house, do you know it is costing you to leave it and go back to your place? Do you know it is costing you to return a plot that you stole? Do you know it is costing you to go for that child that you bore when you are you are young and you ukaluka na kichwa and you said it is not yours do you know that is what it's costing do you know it may cost you to change your wardrobe now with that consciousness consciousness i ask again are you sure you want to go that direction let me provoke you with the next few slides. Then I call it off. Then we do the actual thing. Let's move on. In our today's Bible lesson, we are going to see how God will expect you and me to renew our agreement with him. So, welcome. And take you to the next level. One time, jump that one, Yes. Let's read these words. One, two, three, three, uh, four. What is the difference between testament, covenant, and contract? Write it down and bring it next Sunday for marking. I said you write it down and bring it next Sunday for marking. That's the homework. Let's move on. Slowly, please. There was a king by name. Yes, sir. He started ruling the, the, the nation of Israel when he was eight years. And at eight years, he became the king. And life went on. But this story we are talking about is 21 years after that day. Here is the king. That he is. One time when he was in his ruling, he decided to renovate 
the house of God, the temple. He looked for money, and, God, and people gave money, and then he gave work to the people who were doing that. And in their busy schedule of renovating the temple, they were astonished to meet a special thing. I think you must look at my hand. They were able to see. You are going very fast. They were able to meet a scroll. It amazed them. In their lifetime, they had never seen this, but they used to hear about it. And there they were shocked. And they say, this is too precious for us. Let's take it to the king. And there they are. Can we agree, IT, you look at me? <laughs> Next. They took it to the king. And then the king, when he saw it, he was equally shocked throughout his life. He had never seen it. He called the scribes. He called the scribes to read the scroll for him. When they read it, wow, what was inside was not possible for him to contain. Therefore, what did he do? What did he do? He tore his clothes. And it did not matter who was present. He removed the clothes from his body and said, Whoa, we have gone astray. We have done what the Lord don't want. So he rose from there and went and called all the people, the old, the young, the children, the mothers, and the fathers. And the whole day, they stood before the king as they listened to the word of God being read to them. Standing up. And from morning to evening, they heard the word of the Lord. And when they heard that, they cried out their hearts, and say, Lord, we have gone away from your will. And now we repent. But the king could tell them, you cannot do it. You cannot. But they promised, we are going to change. So from there, the king said, if you mean that way, everything to be destroyed, that is against the will of God. They brought down the temples. They brought down the worship places, they brought down the gods of God. And he gathered all those silver and gold. He crushed them. He burned them with the fire. And that powder, he threw it into the waters at Kidron Valley. And all the statues that were rising very high were brought down. So that sanity... Freedom of God may get its place. Therefore, can we remember this verse that is in the book of Philippians? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. What does it say? Let's go together. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed to the new of your minds. Romans 12, verse 2. Because they had been conformed to the things of the Canaanites, of the Jebusites, of the Gilgachites, of all the nations that were living among them, and they had conformed to them. But now a time came for them to renew their mind and align themselves with their God. Now, let's have this song 
as our remembrance. I'm going to sing it for you because of time. It goes like this. Wam gojea obwana. Oh, what a patangu vumpia. What a pandanju kwambawa. Kamataya pandavio. Query what a pig and be yo. Nawala hawata choka. Nawata quenja kwamigu. Hakika hawata zinia. Go back. We read, sing together. Slide, the other slide. Sing it with me. Wam gonjea ombwana. Oh, what a part and go vumpia. What a pand and you quambawa. Kamataya pandavio. Query what a pig and be yo. Nawala hawata choka. Nawata quenda quamigu. Hakika hawata zinia. So if you are following the Lord, it does not matter the things that are making you fall down or feel down. God is able to raise you again to bring you back to the renewal of your life. Last three. My dear brothers and sisters. One at a time. How many covenants have you made with your God? Do you remember many years you have stayed in this life as a Christian? Do you remember the promises you made with God and other people about your morals and your good standing with them and with your God? I don't know whether you can be able to count them. There are so many. When you are in school, were you not praying for, the exam to, for your exam to pass? What did you tell God if he makes you pass the exam? When you passed, you went to university or to secondary school or to, to college. What did you tell God if you passed your exam in, in the tertiary uh, colleges? It was a covenant. You told God that you are going to serve him. You told God that you are going to be successful in life. You place his name. Did you do it? What about when you are seeking for a job? When you went for that interview? Do you remember? How shaken you are? What did you tell God if he makes you pass that interview? I talk it out. Huh? Was that not a covenant? When you were marrying that wife, when you are getting married to that husband, what did you tell God? Even if you talked outside, uko kwa kahawa, Ama kwa viazi. Ama kwa msiki. And when you are writing down, who did you promise one another? What have happened now? When you came to church, you were made an elder. You were made a deacon. You were made a Christian education or whatever. And you came here and nailed down and you asked several questions. And you said, were those not covenants? How have you been doing it? Now, God is looking at you and wondering, what type of a person is this? Who gave me promises, but he never fulfilled. He only continues to tell me, may thy will be done. While else he himself is doing exactly the opposite. Okay. God's. How many gods have you introduced in your life? Now you value money than anything else. Even now, you are not listening to me properly because you are wondering, when will we finish? I want to rush to open my business. I want to rush to wash my clothes. I want to rush. Now, those have converted you from worshiping God to worshiping them. What is that you are selling in your shop? And when you are told this is not in line with Christianity, you say, we cannot make business without this. What are you doing in somebody else's house? 
You have made that sponsor. You are God. You cannot survive without. He pays rent. He pays. What, what else does he pay? He pay? School fees. So you cannot survive without that person because he's your God. Pride. You feel, that's my age. Me, I'm, I'm not of those class. I don't belong there. Me, I'm a PhD holder. Me, I'm whatever. And mostly those who brag, those who are proud, even they don't have anything tangible. But now pride has become your God. You do people like this. You make your air flesh when they pass. You have made blagging your God. You have made anger your God. That, since <laughs> we are like that. We are people of high temper. So, slapping somebody is not a big issue. And you have made it your God. You cannot manage it. It's beyond your management. Because it is your God. Our family, we are like that. What God have you elevated in your life such that it is not allowing God to have a place in your life? They may be simple things. Phone, TV, all those programs. They may be simple things. You are peerless. They have become God in your life. You must destroy. Do you see how Josiah did? What was the destruction using? Mallets, hammers, crowbars, nails, in the college. So it was not business as usual. It was helter skelter. Boom, 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 as things were clabbering down. Now, my friend, my brother, my sister, it's high time for you to destroy. We want to hear. God expects to hear. Boom, 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 as you bring God down, as you bring your pride down, as you bring your disobedience down, as you bring answering to your husband the way you want, because now you are equal, you are a trozer. So therefore, man and woman have no difference. So you can be able to tell the husband, you can afford to say that. Now, you must take a crowbar and destroy that. You must take a crowbar and say, this wardrobe of clothes that are not decent before God. Somebody throw in, a, in the WhatsApp and say, this is how women used to dress before the devil became a tailor. So if the devil had become a tailor and you have filled your wardrobe with devil's clothes, it's high time for you to, it needs a hammer, it needs a mallet. You who is a second wife, stealing somebody's husband, and staying here in Nairobi comfortably, while the mother, the mother Wabuzi, is suffering at Ushago, it may cost you a hammer to destroy that, and tell that man, enough is enough. I must destroy 2020. I don't belong to you. I have come to ruin your house. Now I must go. Even if it means going to a rental house, let it be because it may call for a mallet. It may call for a hammer. You who are cohabiting with people that are not, you are in Wajiko today, you are with Wairimo the other day, now it's time for you to say, mm, it is over. 2020, I must destroy my life. You gay man. You hunt for men for gazing. You lesbian is here for destruction. You devil worshiper, you are coming here to pretend that you are belong to us, but welcome. You are in the right place, but it's high time to destroy. Mm. It's high time to take a big mallet and say, devil, mm, I'm over with you. 2020, I go to Jesus for salvation. You who have been taking your girls for things, you who have gone back to traditionalists and worshipping gods of Kilinyaga and whoever, it's high time you go back and destroy. It does not matter whether they will call you a lad, hey, or they will call you what? But it's time to tell them, I am going to my God, my creator. It is enough. You who have retained your heart 
difficult that you cannot receive salvation. It's high time for you to destroy and say, I have held myself strong enough like a man or like a woman with refusing this salvation. Today, I destroy that God. I destroy that mountain and say, God, here I am. I come unto you. Last three. May the will of God be done. God's will is to renew your life. God's will is to renew your covenant. God's will is to change and start afresh. Is to go back to the junction and follow the right routes. It's time to say, even if I'll be the stupidest, is there a word like that? Stupidest. Even if I am the last stupid person, let it be, but I align myself with the Masons plan. I align myself with God's plan. Because it may be painful to renew like that ego, but I have decided. I have decided. Whatever it may cost. That's why people of Ikuiwa are praying and fasting so that this day when it comes, God will do his work. Give him a workshop. Give him a workshop to work on you. Give him a platform to work on you. I want to combine with the renewal of the covenant as I add up this sermon. Note this. You must respond. You must respond to this God with an open heart. You must surrender. You must allow him. You must give him away. I want us to do this. Brothers and sisters, I want us to do this. To do what we have heard practically. So that God may have a workshop in your heart and in my heart. We are going to take some time to kneel down and stand up and worship the Lord. Follow the instructions carefully. Like some few places to be with me here. It may take little excess time, but you'll allow it. I want us to recognize that great Jehovah, that great God. Help us. To recognize that he is the he is the gracious one. He is the mighty one. I think you can retain it at that. So, here you are. Open up your hands as you stand up. I'm saying we open up as we let him know that we understand whom he is. We when mungu amen hallelujah we when mungu amen hallelujah o we when mungu Give him the words that you know him with. Tell him whom he is to you. Speak, speak it out, speak it out. Who is God to you? He is great Jehovah. Amen. He is mighty. Hallelujah. He is awesome. He is powerful. He is, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is worthy praise. He is the sovereign one. He translates from generation to generation. Amen. Tell him his greatness. Hallelujah. Tell him of his love, of his power, of his mighty actions in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now speak it out, speak it out, speak it out how great he is.
how wonderful he is how awesome he is how marvelous he is how worthy he is oh great jehovah creator of heaven and earth you created the big animals in the forests even in the sea we adore you we give you glory and we magnify your name glory be to your name because you are mighty in the same position I want us to take this opportunity Amen. and tell God thank you for his greatness. He has done so much for us that we cannot tell it all. So lift up your hands and tell God you have done so much for me and I cannot tell it all. 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 He has done so much for me. And I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. Ame fanya majabu. Count the blessings God have done to you and tell him thank you. Count them one by one. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016. 19 and even 17 there if you well, tell God thank you count his blessings count his doing count his wonderful actions in your life count them one by one and tell him thank you thank you thank you Lord Jehovah you are good you have been so gracious you have been so merciful you have been so worthy I thank you and I say thank you thank you Lord it is you are doing it is your faithfulness Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name. We worship you and say thank you. Now we go to the third step. The IT will give us the slide of the third step. In the other one, the other one, renewal of the covenant. We are going to have some time to tell God how we repent our sins through some words that we are going to pray. We'll be answering, have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. Say that. Have mercy upon us Let us examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and watching our hearts. Lest by self deceit be shut ourselves away from His presence. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, who has set forth the way of life for us in our loved Son, in your beloved son, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our reluctance to follow him. You have spoken and called, and he has not, we have not given heed. Your beauty has shone forth, and we have, not been, we have been blind. You have stretched forth your hands to us through our fellow in need, and we have passed by them. We have taken benefits with ritual thanks. We have been unworthy on your challenges. Oh, love of God has been so sufficient to us. Let's say all of us 
Have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, O Lord. We humble ourselves before you. Those who can be able to kneel down, you can do it now. IT, I'm still expecting something from you. Forgive us, we pray you. The poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayer, our inconsistency and unbelief, our neglect of fellowship and the mean of grace our hesitating witnessing for Christ, our false pretense, and our willful, willful ignorance to your ways. All of us, have mercy upon us and forgive us, O oh Lord. You can be saying, yes, where you feel it. Forgive us where we have wasted our time and misused our gifts. Forgive us where we have excused our own wrongdoings or evaded, evaded our responsibilities. Forgive us that we have been unwilling to, for, to overcome evil with good. That we have drawn back from the cross on which the Prince of Glory died. Response, have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. If we have made no ventures in fellowship, if we have kept in our hands a grievance against other, if we have not sought reconciliation, if we have been anger for the punishment of wrongdoers and slow to seek their redemption, response, have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. Now in silence, Take your time to repent You are sin one by one. You know what you have done. You know what you have done to others. You know what you have missed to do for God. Now it's time for all of us to repent and ask God for forgiveness. Do it now. Don't justify yourself in any way. Don't pretend to be better. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar, and his truth is not in us. He is not a human being. He is God. He can see it. He can see you through. Scan yourself also as you tell God to forgive you. Can open your eyes and see the projector as we say that prayer. Let us go. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your mercies. Blot out my tribulations, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. As we continue to kneel, listen to this. This is the passage that we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we walk in light at as he is light, we have fellowship with him and one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we have
we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sin. Oh Lord, be here to help us, even as we take the other response to renew our covenant. Lord, Holy Spirit of God, come down as we make this commitment before you. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Oh, to him I freely give. up your hand with the bites of lay down I surrender oh, oh to be my breast and savior I surrender I want to sing the, us to sing the chorus once again. To drop out the holding. Any covenant that you have destroyed with God, now it's time to drop it. Drop it. By faith, drop it as you surrender to him. And oh, oh. I surrender oh, oh, to Jim, my breast and Savior. I surrender. Oh. Before we pray the final prayer, I want to pray with those who have never received Jesus Christ in their hearts. This is the first renewal you can do in your life. Say this prayer after me silently in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I want to, uh, to release myself to you. I have repented all my sins. And I give you permission to have a place in my heart. From today henceforth, I belong to you. I'm born again. I will live for you for the rest of my life. Help me from now henceforth to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, know that you are born again. And now you can join the other Christians in praying this confession. You can open your eyes so that we see the projector and make that covenant renewal agreement. We surrender to you, God. You can raise up one hand as a way of surrender, as we say together, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you and laid aside for you. Exalt for, for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and gladly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now... O oh, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it, and the covenant which I have made on earth, 
let it be ratified in heaven. Amen, amen, amen. Rise up. Amen. Have a moment of silence with yourself and God. And now we want to end the service. Open your hands for benediction. Those who are seated, they can rise. And now may the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. As you continue to live and reign in the presence of the Lord. May you live in that newness of the covenants. And may the grace of our Lord, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you. From now, henceforth, now and forevermore. Amen. Our service is over, but you'll have the leader.